Hi, this is Alonia with the StarCraft 2 commentary, and this game is between Just Fake as the Red Terran in 12 o'clock and Liquid Hey Pro as the Blue Zerg in 6 o'clock. And Just Fake made it into the first GSL but got knocked out in around the 32. He was a member of Clan Wearer, but I think he's now left that since there was a scandal, which you can read about on Team Liquid, but I'm not sure if he's got a new clan or not. And obviously, Liquid Hey Pro, a member of Team Liquid, he's in Korea trying to make it into the GSL didn't make it into the first GSL and on this map Metalopolis we've got cross positions out of the four spawns so neither player is going to know exactly where the other one is but it should give good opportunity for the Zerg to go for a heavy kind of macro game and we've just got a standard supply depot going down on 10 supply and the overlord of the Zerg just scouting out the fact that they're not in close air positions so the Zerg will probably send out a drone at some point fairly soon and he just uses the extractor trick because he supply captain himself ever so slightly um, I'm not sure whether that was intentional, it's not actually better to do it that way, it's kind of better to get an overlord on 9 supply, just about, but it's kind of a marginal thing, and he'll probably send a drone to scout and see if they're close on ground positions, and once he knows they're not, or even possibly before that, he'll just go for an expansion hatch down here. I wouldn't expect to see pull first, because for one thing, the Terran hasn't scouted him yet, and he'll see this SUV coming in, so we'll basically know that the Terran's up in this top <coughs> position. I know it's fairly safe for him to take an expansion, so yep, there he gets the expansion down before getting his spawning pool, and it looks like we've got the gas coming up for the Terran, but only one gas at the moment, so he's probably not going to go for a massively early rush, although we'll have to see whether he does decide to get another gas up fairly soon. Just sending that STV down to scout, and he'll see the hatchery going up, and he'll know exactly what the Zerg's doing, and he will might go for a kind of fast expansion himself, just a 14 pool for the Zerg. So, <clears throat> with the cross positions, in the Zerg anyway wants to go for for a kind of heavy economic game, but we'll have to see if the Terran just fake decides to go and kind of follow that economic game or whether he decides to try and put on some pressure. It's obviously harder to put on the pressure with the long rush distance, so it's kind of better in some ways to try and go for that kind of expansionist play, but obviously it's a bit of a risk because the Zerg can always just keep expanding. And at the moment he's just getting a tech lab out and getting a reaper that'll give him some scouting information in the base rather than having to rely on that STV. And it's kind of a fairly standard thing to do at the moment just to get a Reaper out, not bothering to ever get the speed even because it requires a factory, and just get the one Reaper and then some Marines out. Gives you the scouting opportunity, doesn't cost you too much, except for a few a bit of early gas. And he's sending an STV down, so that might be to get a command center possibly down at his natural, but possibly not. Um I'm not sure why he didn't just use the other one yet, but he is getting command center down, so he's going to go for that expansion play. And Hey Pro just getting a few Zerglings out, not committing too much because he doesn't need to, because he knows there isn't really any aggression coming in. <clears throat> and he'll probably know from the SCV kind of heading down the ramp that Just Fake's going for an expansion himself and just getting some Queens out, just going to lay some Creep Humans down, make sure that he's got a decent connection between the two bases. And basically, when they're both going for economic play, you've got to kind of wait and see how it develops just getting three bags down so it looks like you might decide to try and put on a bit of pressure in a minute once he's got the expansion down and just try and make sure the Zerg doesn't have too much of a free reign to just blast away his economy get lots of drones going at the moment just a few more drones, or well, just a couple more drones and SUVs at the moment so Hapro doing pretty well in terms of the economy but there's not really too much happening between the players and one of the things that you can do on this map obviously is drops, you can kind of drop around here, drop in this little kind of hidden area at the back and just kind of try and keep the Zerg as much off guard as you can especially if the Zerg, is, well when the Zerg kind of expands across here he's got all this distance from here right the way to his main base to kind of cover and obviously with the creep it gives, it means units can move pretty fast but you've still got to cover all that distance at the moment go for three barracks with reactors on two of them and a tech lab on the other one which is now getting stim and he's putting another take down to it, so he's going to go for a fairly solid marine marauder mix. Not getting down a factory at the moment, but getting down a second gas. So he might get the factory soon and then go for kind of marine marauder and possibly medevac push once he gets the factory in this top or up. But nothing really coming out at the moment from Hapro either, just getting his lair up. And then he'll probably go for some mutilist, which is pretty much what you see most of the time from Zerg, just going straight up the mutilist plane. He's getting lots of gas down, so. Obviously with the middle being gas every build, it's pretty much what you need, lots and lots and lots of gas, because otherwise you're just going to have so many minerals 
you can expand a lot, but really mostly gas capped, and it looks like he's sending these lings around just to scout around to see what's going on, see what the expansion is doing, see what units are at, and he'll see that the marauders there and pretty much know that he's going to be looking at a marine marauder mix, which means he might, he is getting a baning there, so he's going to know those banings aren't going to be completely effective against all these units, and he's going to have to pretty much control them really well to try and avoid wasting them on these marauders, which can basically tank all the damage from the banelings. But he is getting a bit of defense up. He's just got the one spine crawler still at the front and two queens at the bottom of that ramp. So he's fairly well prepared for now. He doesn't really need to pump out units, and it's better if he doesn't. So obviously, that means he's getting micro up, getting some decent creep spread so he can chase down those units, make sure that they can't run away too quickly, even with the steer, make sure that it's more difficult for them to fight the units. And he's got an overseer in the base, so he'll know exactly what's going on. He sees all of those barracks, all of the units that are coming out and a bunker now coming down at the front to just fake so that's kind of quite defensive in many ways I mean there are those lings that have been hanging around and he knows that they're there but really there aren't that many and he doesn't have a huge amount of scouting information at the moment he doesn't know the bailing nest is there he hasn't really seen anything beyond the spawning pool so he doesn't know exactly what's coming but he should have a reasonable idea that normally what you're going to see from here is the mutilist play and probably some bailings and it looks like he's going to push out with this marine marauder force which is Seven marines, seventeen. I mean, seventeen marines, seven marauders, which would be pretty decent against any mutilists, which he hasn't managed to get out yet. And he's putting down the third hatchery, so he's getting that expansion up. But we see Hapo push. I mean, sorry, Hapo being pushed on by where he's going to take down this one isolated spine crawler, and he's really not got his units in position at the moment, so it's a bit of a easy attack. And it's nicely moving back into the marine, not completely for the brilliant spread. But he just left those more of them at the front so they could kind of tank any damage from the Bainings. Bruce is bringing back so they wouldn't get completely wasted by the Bainings. But it looks like all these Bruce are going to die. He did kill all the Zerglings, he did kill all the Bainings, but he lost every single one of his forces as well. And these three Queens just able to kind of hold off the rest of the attack. Got that third base up. So Hapro in a pretty solid position at the moment. Um, just Fake does know that he's got that third expansion up. He's getting a third expansion off of his own, so kind of playing the macro game with Haypro getting now factory down and that's probably going to be possibly shouldn't be Banshees I wouldn't expect and I'm not completely sure that a Raven's useful so I'm surprised he's not getting a reactor for that starport to just pump out lots of medevacs but in fact he might be wanting a Thor if he's got an armory going down anywhere but I don't see one being built and there isn't one in the production tab so I'm not completely sure what's going on there He's getting to missile turrets, or starting to get some missile turrets down so he can defend against the mutilists when they inevitably come. And you don't really need to see the Zerg base to know that there are going to be mutilists at some point. And an Evo chamber going down at the moment, just to get some upgrades. So both players kind of going for the upgrade game. Already got some upgrades on the way at the engineering bay, plus one attack from the Marines and Marauders. So obviously he's kind of committing to this bio force and he's getting a tank out in fact. So obviously, I mean, tanks pretty useful if you can just sit them at the back and just use them to destroy the banelings before they make it to your marine marauder force and just use them as a protective kind of way of shielding yourself and he's getting a fourth hatchery in his outside his expansion which is pretty good gives you just that extra lava that you need you don't have to think oh no oh no I'm going to be short on lava all the time you can just 